In this video on functions, we work through the three examples that we see here, in which we're given a function's output value, and we need to find its corresponding input value. And the reason why I'm going to work through three examples is to show you three different ways in which the same type of question can be asked. So let's get started. For the first example, we're told that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 1, and we are asked to find the value of x when f of x equals to 7. Another way of saying that is that we have to find which input value x leads to the output value 7. And to do that, all we have to do is copy the expression that we have for the function that we see here, but we're going to replace the left-hand side, f of x, by 7. So that would lead to 7 equals to x cubed minus 1. And at this stage, we're faced with this equation that we need to solve for x. And for that, we use inverse operations. And so the first thing I'll do is get rid of this 1 that's being subtracted from the right-hand side, and I do so by adding 1 to both sides of this equation, which quickly leads to 8 equals to x cubed, which I could rewrite as x cubed equals to 8. Okay, now that I know that x cubed equals to 8, I need to figure out what x is. Well, to get rid of this power of 3 on the x, we need to take its cube root. But as always, anything we do on one side of the equation, we have to do on the other. And so applying the cube root to both sides of this equation leads us to x equals to the cube root of 8. And luckily for us, the cube root of 8 can be found without a calculator. Indeed, to find it, we need to ask ourselves which number do we have to multiply by itself three times to get 8. And the answer is 2. Indeed, 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8, and so the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. And we're done. We've just found which input value leads us to the output value 7. Okay, let's look at the second example. We're given f of x, which equals to 7 over 4x minus 3, and we're asked to solve f of x equals to 1 third. Well, once more, the number that we have here, 1 third, corresponds to an output value of this function. And when we're asked to solve f of x equals to 1 third, it means that we need to find the value of x for which this expression equals to 1 third. In other words, we need to solve the equation 7 over 4x minus 3 equals to 1 over 3. And now to solve this equation for x, the first thing we need to do is to get this x away from this denominator. And for that, we can use cross multiplication. In other words, we're going to multiply the numerator we have here by this entire expression. So that's 4x minus 3 times 1. And we'll multiply the 7 that we have here by the 3 that we have on this denominator. And I'll just add that arrow, that's 3 times 7. Now, taking care of that cross-multiplication leads to 7 times 3, which equals to 1 times, in parentheses, 4x minus 3. That leads to 7 times 3, which is 21, which equals to 1 times 4x minus 3, which is just 4x minus 3. And at this stage, we're faced with a linear equation for x. And to solve it, we use inverse operations again. So let's go ahead. I'll start by getting rid of this 3 that's being subtracted from the right-hand side, and I do so by adding 3 to both sides of this equation. And that leads to 24, which equals to 4x. Next, and I'll carry on up here, I need to get rid of this 4 that's multiplying the x that we have on the right-hand side, and for that, I divide by 4, and I do so on both sides of this equation. Now, 24 divided by 4 is 6, and 4x divided by 4, well, that's just x. So we have 6 equals to x. In other words, x equals to 6. And that's the answer. For the input value x equals to 6, f of x will equal to 1 over 3. Indeed, all we have to do is replace every x we see inside f of x by 6, and it should lead us to 1 over 3. And in fact, I'll do that here. If I calculate f of 6, that's going to equal to 7 over 4 times 6 minus 3, and that's equal to 7 over 24 minus 3, which equals to 7 over 21, which is equal to 1 over 3. 
done. For the input value 6, we definitely get the output value 1 third. Okay, let's move on to the third and final example. We're given f of x, which equals to 3x minus 7, as well as the mapping diagram that we see here. And we need to find p and q. Now, looking at this, we can see that p is an output value and q is an input value. Okay, well, since p corresponds to the output value for x equals to negative 2, all we have to do to find p is replace every x we have inside f of x by negative 2. And so I'll just write that here. We know that p is equal to f of negative 2. In other words, p is the output value we get when we replace x by negative 2. And so that leads us to p equals to f of negative 2, which would be 3 times negative 2 minus 7. In other words, I replace the x I see inside f of x by negative 2. Let me just write that. That's 3 times negative 2 minus 7. Now, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, so that leads us to negative 6 minus 7. And finally, negative 6 minus 7, well, that's equal to negative 13. And so p is equal to negative 13. Done. We now know the value of p. Now, q, on the other hand, is an input value for our function. And it's the input value which leads to the output 26. And so what this means is that if we replace every x we have inside f of x by q, the output has to be 26. In other words, f of q has to be equal to 26. But now going back to the expression we have for f of x and replacing every x we see by q leads us to 3 times q minus 7 equals to 26. And what we now have here is an equation for q. So let's go ahead and solve it. I'll start by getting rid of this 7 that's being subtracted from the left-hand side, and I do so by adding 7 to both sides. That leads us to 3q equals to 26 plus 7, which is 33. Finally, we get rid of this 3 that's multiplying the q, and we do so by dividing both sides of this equation by 3, which leads to the final answer, q equals to 33 divided by 3, which is 11. And we're done. We've just found the input value which leads to the output 26. And there we go. That's it for this video on functions in which we've seen three examples in which we had to find an input value for a given output value.